doing business. We can expect that the jobs people have will continue to change in the, in the years to come. Research science is no different than the corporate world. Labs are adapting to new techniques and areas of inquiry as quickly as they're discovered. The level of competition among labs now means that they must constantly be evolving if they want to compete. Analytic techniques that once took teams of researchers can be done now with the push of a button. None of this has to be terrible. This doesn't have to be a horror story. I remember hearing similar warnings when I was in university 25 years ago, and I'm still here. In fact, what has happened over the past decades is that as some sectors of the economy are automated or outsourced, new sectors emerge to fill holes to serve the new technologies uh, or, or to discover new technologies. Individuals and companies who've been able to keep up with those changes have thrived. They've done extremely well. While those companies and those individuals who insisted on doing things the old ways have suffered badly and been left behind. So our curriculum that we will offer you in our graduate programs and in every course is designed with these realities in mind. We build all of our degrees around a core of active, hands-on research under the guidance of our excellent professors. Our programs also include classes in the core areas of disciplinary knowledge, seminars in emerging fields, and we also build in some exposure to subjects that you might not expect. Uh, we do that so that you will have an awareness of the broader fields around you, which will be a resource when the unexpected arises and you need to change how you're doing business. The people leading you through all of this will be your faculty members. I'm sure you've heard that Nazarbayev University professors are leaders in their field, and they are. Our professors publish in the top journals of their fields, which means that they are not just familiar with, but they are the ones producing the latest science in the world. So working with them means that you will be learning about the latest developments in science, sometimes even before those, those developments are published to the rest of the scientific community. Hiring professors from the best labs and the best universities in the world also means that as a student, you will gain access to the global networks that connect the best scientists. Our professors maintain active collaborations with scholars in places like Stanford, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, National University of Singapore, Tsukuba University in Japan, Oxford in the UK, Humboldt University in Germany, and many, many more. Through our professors, you will be in touch with the researchers in those places as well. One thing I'm very sorry about today is that we cannot welcome you into our Nazarbayev University facilities to see our campus. But rest assured, it will be here waiting for you when we're ready to open up. We have some pretty impressive facilities, including laboratories with state-of-the-art equipment. We have an excellent library connected to other libraries around the world. And we have facilities for sport, socializing, living, um, medicine, everything that you need, as nice as any university that I've ever visited. In fact, I'm, I'm often a little bit jealous of uh, the student experience at, at NU. I wish my university had been so comfortable. Most importantly though, you'll be part of a community of scholars that includes other students like yourself. All of our students are brilliant, motivated, and not afraid of challenge. As important as your professors are for your academic experience, it is these other students who have the biggest impact on your experience in graduate studies. And in you, we're fortunate to attract creative students from all over the globe, which means that everywhere you look when you're here, you'll see people who share your passion and your curiosity. And of course, all of this work is supported by the professional student support teams who are here to help you with anything you may need. Uh, these teams are working behind the scenes today uh, to make sure that everything here goes very smoothly. So I offer them a great thanks today. Uh, and to you, once again, I say thank you for coming to visit us. Uh, and I hope you have a great experience. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Daniel Pugh. Uh, Professor Ferdinand, I think uh, you can start. Floor is yours. I'm here. Okay, so share the display. Maybe I'm going to do something like this. Let's see how it goes. Last time I had some technical problems. So I wanna, cause I, I now trying some new setup with free displays and uh, yeah, it doesn't always go like, like I wanted to have it. 
Okay, so what I want want to ask is whether whether you see my slide. Do you see my slide? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay, can. so yeah, so you should be some seeing some uh, logo on Azerbaijan University. Yes, yes. So I think I can just start. Okay, let me. Oh, now I lost my mouse. <laughs> okay. So after this thing, actually, what I wanted to, what I want before I start, maybe maybe let's do like a fast uh, uh, thing because I see that actually four participants are here: Dana, Maxine, Simbat, and Yona. Is it so? So just a very fast thing that I kind of know before you before I start my presentation that, that who is actually here, okay? About yourself. So who is, who is where? I'm trying to unmute Dana, but it doesn't really work. Dana, can you unmute yourself? Maybe we disabled the muting. Okay, okay. So, D Dana, which Dana you are? <laughs> Hello. Hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes. So, Simbad. Yes, so my name is okay. Matt. My surname is Eric Beck. I'm from Nur Sultan. And uh -huh. now I'm uh, 20 years old. So I um, study in uh, Suleiman Demir University uh, in uh -huh. third course. Um, okay, so, so you're not a Nazarbay University student yet? I'm in bachelor degree, uh, sp uh, specialized uh, Biology and chemistry. But but you and and you. Yes, in future. Sorry, but you are now not at and you. Yes, yes. Yes, you are not, or yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not in 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 you. Okay, you, so you are not in you. Yeah, this is what I wanted to ask. Okay, good, good thing, but thank you, uh, Dana. Unmute yourself. Dear Dana, could you please unmute yourself and introduce yourself? I just want to get some kind of background that uh, who is here. And also maybe Maxim and Yona. Yeah, because we have only only four people, so well, it's more like like a family. Uh, себя представить профессору, так как у вас здесь всего лишь четыре, он бы хотел бы узнать, где вы учитесь на данный момент. Well, but I think that they should speak English if we are. Yeah, just I'm just clarifying. Yeah. Можете, пожалуйста, включить микрофоны и рассказать немного о себе, профессор. Он бы хотел бы знать, с какого вы университета и по какой специальности вы обучаетесь. So we got a message from Maxim. He said. Hello, I have a little microphone problem. Okay. Well, welcome, Maxim, anyway. <laughs> yes, welcome. So, Maxim, are you from NU or you are outside NU? That's, that's basically what I want to wanna, wanna know. I think you can, uh, you can write it in the chat, Maxim. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes, NU, no, not NU. <laughs> How about Yona? I don't see that Yona has some microphone sign, but maybe Yona can also write. So Maxim, yes. Yes means yes, you are from Yenu. Okay, good. Yona? Okay, Yona just dropped out. I think she's using some phone and maybe she's in some 
uh, low coverage area. And uh, Dana? Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, let's, let's start because uh, the time is running. Okay, one sec. So I will just very, very fast run uh, through the program because, well, first of all, I will start my, with myself. Yeah, so my name is Ferdinand Molnar and I'm associate professor at the Department of Biology. Uh, these are the courses where I have been contributed. Some of them are my own, which I'm teaching. So I'm teaching mostly on the master level. I'm also the director of the graduate program. So I should know something about the uh, other program. And that was the main idea why I think uh, I was chosen to present uh, this program. Uh, I publish a couple of textbooks and my research mainly focuses on uh, drug protein, 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 protein DNA interaction. So I'm studying some uh, eukaryotic transcription regulation. Uh, I'm interested in protein structures and uh, structural bioinformatics. So modeling of proteins and their interactions. And from the past also, I, even if I haven't done much research myself, I got quite interested in biopharmaceuticals. I'm also very interested in computer science as well. So I do some kind of cross disciplinary uh, work. So that's about me, but let's not get you bored by, by me. So uh, I usually show this slide because I like these enthusiastic people. And this is just to reflect that SSH has uh, some kind of ongoing computer co co collaboration with uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin State University uh, and Wisconsin Madison University. Uh, so which means that uh, theoretically, if you, are, if you have time and if there would be not COVID, then uh, you would be actually able to, to go there and maybe even uh, do some research there. But anyhow, so this is uh, some kind of uh, link between uh, our school and this, this university. So it's some kind of uh, collaboration. And then these are some laboratories, happy students uh, working in the laboratory. So this, these were pictures taken from, from our, our teaching labs. So these are not research labs. They are mostly on the, on the block in the block seven. The dedicated research facility is uh, actually, I will just quickly scroll to it. So this is the new C4 research building. Uh, so they see like much cleaner, much tidier, much more sophisticated uh, organization of this, of this laboratory. So this is a new building who, who hasn't been in any, who, who is studying here, obviously you, you know about it much, uh, much, uh, much more. And then uh, obviously the, the opportunities during the research, if uh, this COVID would not happen, like uh, uh, our Dean was uh, describing it, then you would be able to travel to various uh, workshops, uh, conferences, present your data, uh, meeting with other scientists, other students around the world. So you could do internships abroad. And this is what has been done uh, before this, this awful, awful uh, uh, times of, of COVID has uh, had been kicked in. So, but this obviously at one point, uh, we should get back to this uh, once this uh, COVID is uh, kind of under control. So uh, very briefly about the program, I don't want to talk too much about, about that. So our program is divided to three different uh, kind of parts or subsections. You have a so-called core uh, research and communication. Now this is in line with uh, also the bachelor studies. So you see the core is basically the, the part which gives you some kind of general uh, idea, general information about um, learning and, and making stronger uh, skills and tools which you would require for, for, for your research. So obviously like in, in life science and in, in also in other uh, fields, uh, if you get your data, very important is to uh, process it. Yeah? So the statistical methods are very, very important uh, for that one. Then there are some general structural and molecular biology in health and disease. So this gives you some kind of overview on, on, on uh, diseases and signaling in diseases and uh, also some treatment in diseases. Then there is a molecular biology of the prokaryotic cells. Well, still like very good model organisms are prokaryotic uh, organisms such as E. coli. So you're able to use it for, for research and this gives you also some kind of quite nice uh, background. Then we have some research seminars. Uh, obviously like the master thesis research. 
uh, which, uh, uh, as you see, that it's a zero credit. This means that uh, this doesn't mean that you don't have to do that, anything. This is to ensure you uh, to some kind of continuous access to laboratory. So <laughs> under normal circumstances, as a first year student, uh, you would be able to go to laboratory. Now, this is a little bit now, uh, how to say, changed because of the COVID situation. So only so far, only second year students are able to go to laboratory. And then science communication, meaning like teaching you how to write. Then in the in the spring semester, this is this is the this is actually the first year. Yeah, so this is everything in the first year. So you have uh, advanced biotechnology, applied bioinformatics, cellular biophysics, research analysis in life sciences. So these are all core uh, courses. Then regarding research, you have master thesis research again zero uh, credit course. So this is the continuation basically. Uh, now the zero credit uh, eventually will convert to some credits at the end of your studies. So uh, the three semesters you are going to have zero credits, but in the fourth semester, basically you get the full credit for your thesis. Yeah? So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not, not good for, for anything. And uh, in the first year you are able to uh, choose one elective. So the, I will come to it in a very short moment. So this is uh, on the second year. So this looks much, much uh, simpler and uh, gives you more choices. So in the second year, we are trusting you uh, much better to uh, actually uh, that you're able to take some electives, uh, meaning that you're able to choose courses uh, according to your personal interest, according to your personal project, or just uh, that you want to take them. And this doesn't have to mean that you have to take it from the from our department. Yeah. So we, there are actually today we had a we had a we had a meeting in the graduate curriculum uh, committee, which uh, 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 suggested uh, that. Uh, so from some other programs, for example, from School of Medicine, from School of Mining, and from other schools, you are able to take courses which would, which you would, for example, benefit. And in the in the in the spring semester, basically, you are you are finishing up your master thesis. Now, to the uh, this is the list of electives what the School of uh, or, or sorry uh, Department of Biology is offering, and uh, we are not offering all of them because uh, obviously we don't want that. Uh, uh, like the master students are spreading, and for example, you you will take you will have uh, in every course one student. Yeah, so usually it's some kind of survey that what students would be interested in. And for example, this year we are offering synthetic biology, advanced cancer biology, hot topics in life sciences, and gene therapy. So these were these were the four courses. So usually there are four courses which are which are offered, and uh, you are able to take take them. So now. Uh, uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to say about. I mean, ah, here you, here we have our our staff. So these are these are the people who are uh, uh, like on the professor rank. We have also um, uh, research uh, teaching assistants and also uh, uh, other other staff. But here I'm just listing the other professors. So our department is quite big, and you see that we have uh, five uh, full professors. Then uh, we have six associate professors and we have eight assistant professors. So all these are uh, people who, uh, as already the Dean was uh, emphasizing it, they are very experienced in their field. Uh, they are, we are very international uh, uh, department as it is true also for the whole university. And uh, well, there is not much I could, I could add to this one. And uh, uh, taking, uh, so uh, what is the time? Actually, the time is uh, now, okay, I still have some, some uh, minutes. So I was uh, actually promising to talk a little bit about the science career, which I think that it's uh, uh, even, even more. So I just keep all these uh, things that how great we are at the department. So usually comes the question, which is, I think, quite an important question in, in the life of the people. OK, so I'm going to study now this, uh, this master. But what I can do? So where can I, where can I get a job? Because, uh, well, uh, obviously, it's very important to have an interest in something. But then if you're unable to, to get a job, then you are, you are a little bit in problem. So uh, Careers in life science, actually, it's uh, and I will I will try to convince you that uh, actually you are you are in a very good place, and uh, there is a, there is a lot of things what you are able to do. So just in very briefly, uh, this slide is telling you the overview that you are able to get the job in the industrial settings, non-governmental, academic, governmental, and and you are able to also choose an alternative career. Now, what are these? So academic, obviously, uh, I think I don't even have to go there. So it's something connected to education. And you don't necessarily have to go to, 
to, to teach to university. So for example, if you like to work with children, you are able to also uh, go there. Obviously, you maybe uh, have to update yourself a little bit to some uh, graduate uh, uh, education level. So you have to have some kind of degree or some kind of course on that one. I don't know what are the, what are the requirements, for example, in Kazakhstan and uh, in other countries. But there is a possibility that you are able to also teach in the, in the primary or secondary uh, level, not just at the universities. Or, for example, you are able to educate uh, adults. Yeah? So those who are, for example, not uh, working at the university, but, for example, who would like to take some courses. And actually, nowadays, uh, because of the COVID, these online uh, teaching and, and uh, online courses, online platforms are getting very, very uh, widespread. So I think there is a lot of niche uh, to, to explore this one. Now, regarding the governmental, uh, there are uh, obviously uh, certain institutes. For example, we also have in, 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 in Astana uh, uh, institutes which are, which are uh, uh, scientific or uh, uh, institutes and uh, they are not part of the academic uh, 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 university uh, network. So these are governmental institutes where you're able to do your research, uh, such as, for example, national institutes, Academy of Science, uh, you're able to uh, con uh, go to, to governmental committees. Yeah? So if you finish uh, the, the master, of, uh, master of Science, in, in, you will get Master of Science in, in Biology, or like the full name is uh, Biology, uh, Sciences and Technologies. Uh, you are able to gain an expertise which, for example, could be valuable for some governmental officials to know your opinion uh, regarding environment, regarding, I don't know, uh, some uh, uh, agriculture uh, decisions or, or some, some other decisions. And this comes to the point also to science policy. So uh, if you have a lawyer, so lawyers obviously make some kind of law but they do not have the background actually it's for, 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 uh, for in, the, in the field of life sciences. And for example, there you are able to uh, provide a kind of uh, input which could be interesting or important for, for making a decision. Yeah? So science policy is very important regarding governmental. Non-governmental, these are some uh, medicinal agencies, WHO, UN. Yeah? So actually you, that you are from uh, Kazakhstan, uh, as far as I know, Kazakhstan is underrepresented under, in this uh, in this uh, organization, so in WHO and UN. And so you actually, you are in a quite good position because you speak Russian, so that's one UN language. And uh, well, if you speak English, it's the second UN language and you are uh, required to speak two, uh, two uh, official UN languages, yeah? Which uh, to my knowledge, it's uh, English, Russian, uh, uh, French, uh, Arabic and Chinese, yeah? So German is not, for example, belonging there. So uh, if you speak these two languages, this is actually a requirement if you want to get a job in UN. And again, this is connected also in this respect to science policy. Uh, well, uh, the, the last one is also a little bit self-explanatory. So industrial. Uh, although in Kazakhstan, you don't have much uh, pharma and biotech industries, but you have to think globally. Yeah? So obviously you are able to get a job in uh, abroad or if uh, I really strongly believe that these companies, they will find uh, Kazakhstan and they, they will start to uh, build here uh, factories. Uh, actually, I think something is already happening, but it's not so not so progressive yet at this point. And uh, obviously, like COVID uh, stopped all these all these uh, uh, activities. Then, for example, there are there are certain companies which are uh, so called service companies. Now, these companies are not directly pharma companies or biotech companies. They are providing uh, service for them. So the pharma and the biotech like to outsource uh, certain essays, certain activities, and these service companies, uh, they are able to uh, uh, contribute uh, to this one. So one of them is, for example, Charles Rivers. Uh, if you want, you can, you can uh, uh, search for it. Uh, and for example, companies providing tools uh, for research. So consumables, enzymes, and so on. So these are not exactly biotech pharma companies. These are companies which are supporting the research. And obviously, you are able to also uh, work in the in the distribution uh, field in, for these for these companies. Now, uh, alternative careers in life science. Now, that's that's very interesting one because this is giving you some kind of uh, view on that you are able to merge uh, your in additional interest if you have. Yeah. So, what I mean by that? So, let's start for example, communication and outreach. So. If you are, if you're really interested in, in and you are good in, in science, but at the end, uh, for example, you like to write. So you have also a little bit of humanity uh, touch in your, in your personality. You don't need to give up uh, on that one. For example, you are able to 
become a science writer or journalist. You're able to uh, do this kind of blogs uh, in newspapers, in, in online uh, blogs about, about uh, life science, for example, to make the topics, uh, the sophisticated topics of life science understandable for, for general public. Yeah? So that, that could be one, one way of, of uh, again, uh, finding, uh, finding another job. Yeah? If you don't want to work directly in the, just purely in the research. Or for example, there are various museums uh, museum education officer. Yeah? So these are the people who are working in the museum, in the, in the scientific centers, and they are explaining science to the, to the visitors. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure like how, what level it is in Kazakhstan, but as I said, you have to uh, think globally. And then uh, the second one would be the event manager. So if you like to manage things, if you like to plan events, uh, then you can also combine it because there are a lot of, uh, lot of um, uh, 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 scientific activities uh, regarding workshops, conferences, uh, festivals, and so on, science uh, fairs for students and for general public. So that, that could be also, also one way of, of working. Uh, regarding consultancy, so in the next, next column, so management consultancy, that would uh, uh, actually mean that you are uh, giving some kind of uh, consultation based on your, uh, usually these people, they are, they are able to work in, the, in some company, like consultant company, but you are able to also do it by yourself. Yeah? And uh, you are able to provide your expertise uh, for, obviously to sell your expertise uh, in, in the life science, what you learn. Now, the last one is funding and administration. So since you know uh, science, you just need to a little bit get uh, up to date in, in the management things and maybe a little bit in the finance. And you would be the right person, for example, to manage, uh, 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 manage uh, to, be, to work in the, in the departments, uh, for example, of, of some organization which do research. So you don't, you don't do research by yourself, but you super think it by managing and uh, <clears throat> and coordinating, for example, these, these activities. Again, you know uh, something about life science and you are using this knowledge uh, to, to make or to, to, to support uh, the, these activities in, this, in these uh, uh, organizations. Uh, then uh, the, the, the next one would be intellectual property and patent law. So this is for someone who likes life science and also likes law. So this is actually a very lucrative uh, job. So these are usually these patent lawyers, patent attorneys, patent examiners, uh, trademark attorneys. So they are, they are the ones which uh, will, will help you to obtain a patent. Yeah, for, so uh, the, in, the, in the life science, for example, academy or in the industry, you have some kind of invention and you want to patent it. So these people are the ones which uh, you would need to uh, talk to and <clears throat> they could help you uh, with obtaining the, the, the patent for your invention. Then manufacturing and production. So this is again, uh, something that you are not exactly working in the company, but you come to the company and for example, you do health inspection, you do safety inspection uh, from, for example, for, for regarding or connecting to the production. Or for example, you are doing, uh, you are doing some kind of process de development. Yeah? So you know something, well, obviously not directly after you, you, you finish your master, maybe you need a couple of years to get into this one. So these are more like uh, industrially connected uh, jobs, but not necessary that you directly work for the company. So these are third party uh, uh, employments. And then you do uh, as a third party uh, expert, you, you provide your services for these companies. And the, la the last one in this, in this uh, category would be the quality manager. Yeah? So the quality insurance is a very, very important uh, factor, in not just in, in, for example, food production or, 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 or uh, uh, some kind of uh, technology production, but also in science. Yeah? So to, to ensure, for example, that uh, all the quality of uh, all the batches of, of uh, drugs, which are medicine, which is produced are uh, in the same quality. Yeah? So that's, that, that's very, very important. And then the last one would be something if you, if you are interested in a little bit in medical sciences, but you still have background in life sciences, I think you would be very easy to adjust to, for example, medical sales. So you would, you would work for some pharma company, not in the production and not in the research and development, but you would be connected with the pharma company that you would visit, for, for example, medical doctors, and you would sell, uh, try to convince them to, to change, for example, to, to a new, more efficient drug. So you would, you would, uh, we would work in a medical sale uh, uh, one. And also, for example, there are also uh, machines, which are, for example, NMR machines, uh, uh, ultrasound machines. So this not just, not just about drugs, but uh, 
various various uh, various uh, other other products which are, for example, used in hospitals or in polyclinics. Yeah, so you as a life scientist, you would be very easy to actually go go there. Much you would be much easier uh, understanding all these technologies than, for example, someone who studies economics. So that's that's that would be also kind of important. Now the last last one I think what uh, what I have here is uh, publishing recruitment and science policy. So publishing again, if you uh, not just write to uh, 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 not you, you you are not just a writer, but you are able to critically review, for example, manuscripts, and you are able to critically view uh, some of the some of the publications. You would be able to uh, work in in this kind of publishing company. So publishing uh, scientific books, uh, publishing journals. Yeah. So uh, science science publisher. Then recruitment. So obviously, uh, every organization uh, needs to needs to recruit people. And based again your background, your expertise in life sciences, you would be able to uh, help uh, to to uh, HR uh, human resources, uh, for example, to suggest them candidates. Yeah. So that could be also also important. There is also, for example, the higher education career advisor. So uh, if you uh, after you 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 are not anymore student. You can actually help students uh, if you are engaging in this field to choose their career, to help them, to tell them actually what I'm talking about now. Uh, maybe not, maybe, but obviously more in depth. You would you would uh, you would uh, engage in, in in that field, and you could tell them what kind of possibilities they have after they finish their 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 uh, studies. And again, coming the, the the science policy. So this is uh, basically using your scientific knowledge to assist in the policy formulation for governments, for organizations, for 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 companies. So uh, uh, when when we are talking about our uh, career, uh, there is uh, there is one word which comes up, and it's a STEM uh, uh, word. So the, what, we, what, what this is uh, about, it's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So life sciences and, and obviously biology as well. Uh, in fact, life sciences, if you, if, you take, uh, if you translate in English biology, this means life science. So basically we are talking about the same thing. So life sciences and, and biology, it's the, it's the same, same uh, obviously it's a synonym. So, <clears throat> so life sciences also belong to this category. And this is uh, this is the the category which develops the fastest and gives you the the the, the highest uh, uh, currently uh, the life sciences and computer science uh, jobs are the most sought out jobs. Now, <clears throat> obviously, I don't have here, and this graph doesn't reflect the the COVID situation or after COVID, uh, but still it reflects uh, that these are very very dynamically developing uh, fields. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to lie if uh, I'm also telling you that there is one additional uh, sector which is developing very, very dramatically, and this is the healthcare. Yeah, so people are getting older, and obviously that is also influencing the, the development and advancement of, of uh, health, uh, health industry. But uh, computer occupation and life science, and even if you join it together, so for example, some bioinformatic uh, solutions or data science, uh, that's actually the, the, the hot topic now. So, uh, what are usually the, the the skills what are wanted from from the absolutes? Yeah. So uh, here you have it. I, I don't want to go to 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 that one. Obviously, uh, uh, if you if you want, uh, you can just uh, write me an email or you can just ask uh, uh, any of the organizers, either Isa, the ACM, uh, uh to to send you uh, my my presentation if you wish to. So these are, uh, if you have some of these skills or majority of the skills, then you will be very, uh, very successful on the, on the job market. Yeah? So that's, that's very important. Now, this is also telling a little bit about, uh, uh, about the, the uh, opportunities uh, after, you, after you finish. So obviously like the most sought out people are the, on the bachelor degree because these are the little worker bees. Uh, however, uh, in the, on the next level, you have less people and uh, you are representing a right 2.8% uh, job. Now, this is, I think, coming from, from uh, the US uh, uh, projections or for, for jobs. And then if you actually going further to, to, to doctoral degree, then you see actually a little bit of enlargement. This also means that uh, many of the people who have master, they actually decide to continue uh, to, to go to, to, to PhD, which is not a bad thing. And if you are already in, the, uh, in this uh, 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 learning uh, uh, environment, then I think it's very easy to just directly go from the master uh, to, to PhD. So uh, basically, this is what I wanted to uh, tell. 
Uh, I have just one comment what, uh, what uh, our dean was telling about uh, robots. So I don't know whether you know, but now it was actually 100 years uh, anniversary of, uh, of uh, um, uh, utilizing or, or inventing the word robot. So it comes from, uh, from uh, Karel Čapek, a Czech writer who wrote in, in 1920, uh, R -U -R -U -R. This, is the, this is the name of the, of the, of the uh, book or, or, uh, and uh, this is actually telling about uh, the, something about uh, replacement, replacing uh, people with robot. Now, if you look uh, now with the perspective of the 100 years, uh, you clearly see that the robots, robots did not replace human, uh, like in, in many, many aspects. They uh, replaced uh, humans in the worst conditions, the repetitive, the awfully repetitive jobs when you have to do everything in the same way. So actually it's quite a good one. And what th that means is that uh, the robots uh, are not the ones who, which will take uh, our jobs away. They will take the awful jobs away. Yeah, which means that uh, one can actually concentrate on much more, much more rewarding, rewarding jobs, which are connected, for example, with thinking. So I don't know whether you know, but the last 30 years, even if you hear it like a lot about artificial intelligence and deep learning, not much progress has been made. Yeah? Although, although some articles will suggest uh, otherwise, but the algorithms are running on, on much better hardware. Therefore, it seems that they are also more effective. Uh, but we did not create uh, a completely artificial intelligence. We cannot replace uh, the emotions. We cannot replace uh, complex human thinking. And uh, now this I'm telling about, uh, like knowing about this, this hundred years perspective. So I don't think that you need to so much worry about, about robotization and automatization. You have to actually uh, take it as a, as a very good uh, choice for, for uh, helping uh, humanity to achieve something uh, in a more effective way, yeah? And you are able to uh, do actually a more rewarding job, uh, the thinking job and the planning and the designing, yeah? which uh, so far no robot, and I'm pretty sure that the next couple of decades, no, no other robots or no robots or no artificial intelligence will be able to do it. But maybe I'm wrong, but that's my, my personal opinion. So I would stop now and uh, we have still, uh, let's say around uh, 15 minutes. So please uh, ask questions. I'm happy to answer. Uh, thank you, Professor. I hope uh, your presentation uh, was very helpful for our participants in terms of uh, where they can work after graduation. So we have uh, Dana, Maxim, and Sambat. If you have any questions, please uh, feel not, free to ask. You're not disappeared. Them. Oh, okay. Yona disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have any questions regarding the program or uh, admission process or uh, research opportunities, uh, courses, please, please feel free to ask them. You can leave them in the chat. And um, Professor and Asim Koshubayeva, the school's manager for academic and student affairs, uh, will cover all of them. We'll try to cover all of them. I mean, I just want to tell something that uh, usually comes the word uh, or the question about uh, research. Well, research is the main component of the of the master program. Yeah, so there is no compromise on on that. Everybody has to do the research, and the research is the main output in form of master thesis. Okay, so that's that's not really negotiable. So you need to work either in a laboratory or in some theoretical uh, uh, project, but that's pretty much a must. Okay. So Dana Maxin Simbat, please utilize the time. I think that uh, the most, uh, I'm in great terms. I have no questions at all. <laughs> okay, Maxim. who doesn't have a question? <laughs> Maxim. Maxim sent this question. Maxim, Maxim, do, you don't have a question. <laughs> you, are, you are a lucky guy. <laughs> he knows all the answers. So, but I can just uh, maybe. Or he knows all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and the questions as well. Um, 
I can just uh, maybe um, remind the information that you and the participants could also find in on our web page is that um, the start date of, of uh, online registration for early admissions is planning to start uh, from November 16th. And uh, there are different um, uh, and deadlines for um, local residents and for international uh, applicants. And for international applicants, uh, the deadline will be the beginning of March. And for uh, residents of Kazakhstan, it will be at the end of April. Also, um, what, um, what also I can just add that uh, maybe the application package uh, that should be provided to admissions department is a bachelor's degree diploma, uh, personal essay, uh, two letters of recommendation, CV, IELTS test score of um, 6.5 with subscore requirements no less than 6.0 or even higher. And also uh, a minimum C uh, GPA of uh, 2.75 uh, out of uh, 4.0. So, and also yes, CV. Uh, these are the main requirements and trial requirements. And after that, uh, you will be going through admissions process and luckily uh, be uh, admitted to a new. Well, I would just like to add one even more important requirement, which is not mm -hmm. written, and which is interest in science, in life science. Yeah, right. Research, uh, research yeah. and science, of course. This could be uh, yes. also indicated in the personal essay. Yeah. Yes, yes. In personalized letter, yes. It's very yes, important. Yes, yes. Yeah, try to a little bit uh, write about why why you are interested in uh, in biology. Yeah, so usually people write like oh, from my childhood I like to like mm -hmm. the animals, I like the plants, and this kind of thing, which is very nice. But I would say on the master level we are expecting a little bit more, like what you would like to contribute to. And maybe, well, you are not anymore a teenager, yeah? So you are mm -hmm. basically an adult person. So that means that you read, obviously, quite a lot of information. You watch TV, you read various uh, blogs, articles, and so on. Even if not scientific one, but ones which may be connected to, to science. So try to incorporate the something that... Uh, what you would like to accomplish also in the future. So why this is kind of calling you? Why specifically uh, this uh, field? And obviously also an interesting touch is to a little bit think, of, or think about why you are choosing the menu. Yeah, obviously it's the one of, um, I don't want to say it's the best unit in Kazakhstan. I don't want to say that, let others decide about that. But uh, we know that it's a good university, it's an international university, it's a nice university, but you need to add there a little bit more, like why exactly, yeah? Well, if you, if you only think about uh, these ones, uh, this is also fine. But I think these two things you should address, yeah? Why this field and why NU? Uh, so we have we have uh, a message from Sambad Sirbek. Uh, she says, yes. "Thank you very much. It was very helpful while writing our research. Uh, whether we uh, will work with professors, I think uh, it was an well, like obviously you work with professors. You yeah. can't work alone. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the." Uh, in many cases, professors, not many, but in all the cases, professors are very busy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, don't expect that the professor takes your hand and now he will be all the time with you in the laboratory. It's more what you get from the professor is the guidance to discuss mm -hmm. things, to design together, to make you understand the thing. Obviously, if the professor has time to go to the laboratory with you, 
but think about it. We need to teach, we need administration, we need to write grants, we need to take about research. So that's pretty much that you need 30 hours per day to do that. And, but what, for example, may happen that you may be uh, mentored or directly lab, uh, working with some uh, PhD student or a postdoc who is more experienced. So these uh, PhD students, postdocs, they are every day in the laboratory and they are going to be there with you if you are there, yeah? So expect more guidance and discussions with your, with your professor, okay? Unfortunately, and it's a very sad uh, situation, we don't have so much time to spend in laboratory like we would love to. I would like to be in the laboratory from the morning until the late night, but that's just not possible. So uh, I think also I, it uh, I could add question. also one information uh, that could be could be pos uh, possibly helpful for the participants uh, regarding NUZIP program. NUZIP is mm -hmm. a, a Nazarbayev University zero year of master's program. Uh, it's a two semester full time intensive English and content course program, which is provided by our university. And it's like a conditional uh, enrollment. Uh, it means that after, um, um, after the completion of uh, NUZIP, uh, you will be enrolled to the main program. For example, um, for NUZIP, uh, the entire requirement uh, in English, in um, language proficiency English, uh, is um, lower uh, than uh, to the main program. Uh, the NUZIP uh, program requires um, IELTS test score of uh, 5.5 with sub-score requirements no less than 5.0. Um, so I think it will be also helpful for students from like um, state universities. <laughs> I have one uh, thing to add there, uh, which is don't expect uh, any courses or any upgrade from biology in this NUZIP. Like NUZIP is designed purely to improve your English knowledge. So if your scientific background, your biology background is not good enough, you will be not, uh, not uh, taken to NUZIP. Yeah? NUZIP is really right. to improve your English skills. That, that is very important to keep in mind. So yes. you have to still know a lot from the biology. Uh, I will give you an example. For example, this year in the, uh, we had with my colleague, uh, we were interviewing the, the applicants. Asem was very supportive in, in that one. Thank you, Asem, again. And okay. for example, it happened that uh, a student was uh, trying to answer, but could not really answer in English well. So then we just ask since, uh, well, I, I kind of understand the Russian and obviously my colleague, she is Russian. So we asked the, the applicant to answer in Russian. Okay, and then it proved actually quite nice. So we, we could uh, assess the quality of the scientific background, biology, and uh, I'm still sharing. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, still sharing. <laughs> okay, okay, now we see sorry. your face. Yeah, sorry. But anyway, my face is not so interesting. So, <laughs> so this student was uh, uh, talking in, in uh, Russian and then uh, we could recommend uh, them to, to Nuzi because only the English was the, the, the problem or the questionable. Mm -hmm. But Asem knows it pretty well also. <laughs> All right. Um, dear participants, do you have any questions? We have like one, one minute. Left. Yeah, one minute left. <laughs> one minute to wish you a beautiful Friday evening. Yes. <laughs> I'm typing down the 
email address. You can um, send all your requests and all your questions to this email and we will answer them. My colleague Isada will answer them. So, <clears throat> uh, and all information can be found on our website. Please don't forget that. Uh, sorry, Sam, you can yeah, um, if go you are on. So sure about something, please, please contact uh, the the admission department. Yeah. So don't don't uh, don't think that uh, you know everything, and uh, maybe some of the documents you will you will miss out. Better to contact them and to get a confirmation than to leave out something from your application package. I hope ladies will agree with me. Uh, <clears throat> so Simbad, uh, she sent uh, one more uh, message in Russian. Uh, after Nazib, what is the um, process of admissions? Is the program um, like no, you, grant? You don't, uh, you, you don't, you don't. Okay, Simbad, uh, the um, pros admissions procedure for MUZIP and main program is the same. Uh, the only uh, exception is the language proficiency. So uh, the admission to MUZIP uh, is like the conditional enrollment. Uh, so after uh, the completion of MUZIP, yeah, you will be enrolled to main program and the grant will be provided. Uh, and also you have the question regarding the tips on how to uh, get an interview. So I think the, the main uh, like advice that I could just uh, say that maybe uh, to review all your background in terms of biology and also uh, do not stress, like at least try not to stress. Yes. And um, yes. try to just um, assure that. Um, try to be confident, friendly. Confident, right. nice. Basically, just uh, the interview is a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be afraid. Like, it's just like you sit down with someone to drink a coffee and you start to talk. Actually, the professors, they are very welcome. Like, they're very friendly and. Mm, so I think it's easy. Like there's no need to be afraid, right? All right. Yes. No. <laughs> okay. No, definitely not. Okay. I think that's it for today. Oh my god. We have. Oh, somebody. <laughs> <is coming. laughs> Maybe they thought that. Babar, babar. Hello. Where are you from? Hello, Baba Bur. Are we like pronouncing your name right? I think it's some kind of username. Mm -hmm. Maybe or... Barbara. Barbara. Maybe. Like we're just guessing. <laughs> I don't know. Can she unmute herself? I cannot unmute her. Uh, ask to unmute. Okay. Uh, dear oh, guests, dear new guests, do you have any questions regarding the program or admission procedures? Because we can answer them like right now. Mm -hmm. You can leave your question in the chat if you want to. Mm -hmm. Like you are one hour I'm late. I'm still curious, Dana, is this Dana? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we know we know Simbad. She very nicely yes. introduced herself. Maxim wonderfully solved the problem with the microphone by by <laughs> writing us. And yeah. Dana is a mysterious mysterious lady, mysterious Dana. And Dana, uh, please can you introduce Brody, yourself? <laughs> Are you from a new or? outside in you i don't know we already asked her maybe she doesn't want to talk to us uh simbat has another question so with the motivation yeah. 
Yeah, right. Yes. Well, I, I already told you that uh, basically, well, as it says, motivation. So what motivates you? If I ask you the question, why? What is the motivation that you want to study life sciences or biology? And what is your motivation to come to a new? Okay. So these are the questions what you need to think about. Why exactly you want to do what you want to do? So I will give you some very funny example. I don't know, you had a grand, you lived your childhood next to Semei with the beautiful forest or in Almaty, you were every day going to Koktobe with your grandfather and you were so amazed about the nature and so on that, that that was kind of your interest. And you were studying many, many, many things. You were getting better in the biology and this personally formed you that you have a very strong affinity and interest to life science. And in the future, you wanna solve all the problems regarding treatment of cancer. Yeah? And now this general thing, just try to expand to about one page. Okay. Well, obviously this was a made up story but something like this or just try to think about something else if your personal letter this motivational letter is unique then because usually candidates write about this what i just said but you may think about something else yeah that you saw something somewhere you read about something and that was the impulse that was the switch which basically told you that this is the right thing to do. I think we can end this if the participants don't have any questions for us. Thank you, for Professor, for joining us today, for preparing this uh, very interesting and helpful presentation. Uh, thank you, ICM, for joining us. Sorry for being us. fast, because probably I was speaking just very fast, but I hope that you still had, you didn't have problem. With, with no, it's that. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Asim, for joining us today for helping mm -hmm. um, answering the questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maxim. <laughs> but I got it. Great, Maxim. You are doing Maxim, you are cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was difficult, but I got it. Okay. Thank you, Aida, as well. For hosting their uh, session. Yeah. Mm. I wish everybody um, like to have a good rest of the day. Like yeah, and like weekends. <laughs> yeah, weekends. Yeah, Friday. Night. Well, weekend is going to be a working weekend. So, <laughs> guys, be prepared. If you start to do science, okay, <laughs> then your weekends will look interesting <laughs> so uh, I will just write well it's very obvious because it's my name nuedu.kz so if you want to get the slides since we are not here 100 people just uh, <laughs> drop me an email I will send you the slide okay because Simbat was writing about the slides yeah <clears throat> so I'm very happy to share you with, with you the slides there's nothing, nothing secretive on these slides. So. Okay, or maybe you could like send me or Miria. I can also the, send it to you. Yeah. yeah, so we can send Whatever it to is the easier for, for, for the people. Yeah. Okay, thank you again to all of you. See mm -hmm. you. Bye-bye. I will Bye. end this session. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.